Hello and greetings, friends, and welcome to The Bright Side, your nutritional program dedicated to the understanding of the vast world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. I am your host, Pharmacist Ben, nutritional pharmacist from Boulder, Colorado. I use nutritional supplements where other healthcare practitioners use toxic pharmaceutical drugs and sometimes deadly medical procedures. If you suspect that there are natural nutritional roads to your health and vitality and well-being and to addressing your health challenges, whatever they may be, but you don't know where to begin, you have come to the right place. As you listen to The Bright Side every day, you are more and more in control of your body, you are more and more knowledgeable, and you know you can overcome any health challenge. That is why we are here today and every day on The Bright Side, helping clear up the sometimes confusing world of nutrition and nutritional supplementation. Over the last 31 years of practicing pharmacy, I have seen drug-free recoveries from diabetes, hypertension, obesity, skin diseases like psoriasis, eczema, rosacea, acne, digestive ailments, autoimmune issues of all kinds. Recoveries that by the standards of modern medicine can only be called a miracle. But what is in the world of the body, what is in the world of biology, standard operating procedure. Because the human biological system is a healing system, it's a regenerating system, it is designed divinely to heal and renew itself on a moment-to-moment -moment basis, and while some folks may call that healing, renewing, regenerating system a miracle, it really is just the way the body works. If you have questions about health or nutrition or prescription drugs, we are here for you. We welcome your phone calls on the bright side, 844-236-6010 is our number, 844-236. 236-6010. If you have questions about the longevity products, the longevity business, something you may have heard about or read about, anything we're talking about here today, or if you have a comment or success story, we love hearing success stories. 844-236-6010 is our number on the bright side. If you want to purchase any of the longevity products you hear advertised or recommended on the program, please head over to my website, brightsideben.com or pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com. You can order Longevity products off the website. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. If you're interested in starting a business, if you're an entrepreneur, or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, if you want to make your own hours, work out of the home, earn as much or as little money as you like, or if you just want to get your products at the wholesale price for a one-time $25 fee, you can start a nutrition business. With Longevity, you can help sell Longevity products. You can help spread the word about the power and importance of a good nutritional supplement program. If you are the kind of person that likes the world of health, if you like nutritional supplementation, if you've noticed how nutritional supplements or the Longevity products have changed your life and you want to earn some thank you checks while you're spreading the word, call 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, pharmacistben.com. For a one-time $25 fee, you can sign up right off the website, or you can talk to the folks at 866-735-2470, and they can sign you up on the phone as well. Also want to remind you to check out our Truth Skin Health products, truthtreatments.com, our award-winning Truth Serum, voted one of the top 150 products in the world. That was quite an honor by Harper's Bazaar. Also, our Truth Retinol 5% Gel, made with retinol, 5% retinol, as well as vitamin C. All our, truth, all our truth treatment products are packed with vitamin C. Never any preservatives, fragrances, fillers, waxes, emulsifiers, surfactants, silicon oil, water, nothing your skin doesn't need or doesn't want in any of our Truth Skin Health products, just the active and functional ingredients, 100% active and functional ingredients in all our Truth Skin Health products. You can check them out at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, welcome back to The Bright Side. We've been talking brain health, specifically as it regards excitotoxicity, excitotoxins and MSG. On our last program, we said that from a practical sense, whether your brain health issues are called Alzheimer's disease or they're called vascular dementia or Lewy body dementia or epilepsy or whatever it is, whatever your brain health challenge happens to be called, it doesn't really matter. There's only one cause of brain health issues and, and there's only one cause of all health issues. All health issues are caused by cells that are messed up, period. Your cells get messed up, we get a health challenge. What is it ca that causes cells to get messed up, whether it's skin cells if you have eczema or arthritis or joint cells if you have arthritis or liver cells if you have fatty liver disease or brain cells if you have dementia or skin cells if you have psoriasis or eczema or acne. All disease is cell disease and there's only one cause of cell disease. 
well, I shouldn't say one cause. There's three causes of cell disease. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification, period. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification. This leads to an inflammatory process, which leads to more starvation, suffocation, and toxification. Starvation, suffocation, and toxification are so important to recognize because once we understand this, these fundamental breakdowns that occur underneath our diseases or underneath our symptoms, It'll become clear why drugs can't help us. It'll become clear why doctors can't help us. It'll become clear why the medical model is completely impotent and useless when it comes to dealing with chronic degenerative disease. And I don't want to be the bearer of bad news, and I don't want to offend anybody, but if you are dealing with a long-term chronic degenerative disease and you're going to a doctor for it, you drank the Kool-Aid. You've been duped. You've been suckered. And it's not your fault because we're induced and hypnotized to believe that doctors are our saviors. They are not our saviors. In fact, they cause more harm than good many times. And this is why you read statistics how hundreds of thousands of people are wounded or die every year from medical treatment. Doctors are not our saviors when it comes to chronic long-term degenerative disease. Yes, it's true. If you break a bone, you want a surgeon. If you have some kind of uh, acute illness, it may be that a physician can understand and maybe help you with treatment. But for long-term chronic degenerative diseases, which are basically what we're suffering from, 80% of our healthcare costs are, uh, and healthcare misery is related to these long-term chronic diseases, what we're dealing with is cellular issues. And the medical model is impotent at the level of a cell. There is zippo, nada, nothing a doctor can do at the level of a cell because do cells aren't hypnotized by the, do by the doctor. We may be. We may be hypnotized by commercials and, and billboards that tell you how wonderful all the people at the hospitals are, how it's not a job, it's our calling. That's what it says on the billboards for your hospitals and your, your Kaiser insurance companies. While we may be duped, our cells aren't. And our cells will not accept the doctor's orders. Our cell will not take the doctor's medicine unless we overwhelm the cell with poison or we extract the cell with some kind of surgical procedure or we radiate or electrocute the cell. That's basically what doctors do to the cells. They poison it, they extract it, they radiate it, and they electrocute it because shy of that, there's nothing the cell is going to do. There's nothing uh, the medical model has in its magical bag of tricks that's going to help a cell. And our long-term chronic degenerative diseases are cellular in nature. And they're the result of cellular starvation, suffocation, and toxification. And it doesn't matter where it is occurring. It doesn't matter if it's in the liver. It doesn't matter if it's in the brain. It doesn't matter if it's in the skin. It's all the same thing. And the only people that think that, that benefit from this notion, this misguided idea that we have special diseases are the specialists because they get paid and they get paid big time. And they're not going to tell you that they can't do anything for your MS or your autoimmune diseases or your acne, nothing. Because at the end of the day, it involves how we feed a cell, that is what we're eating and supplementing, how we breathe a cell, that means how we're oxygenating our cells and the toxicity that's entering into our body. Feed the cell, breathe the cell, clean the environment that the cell is sitting in, and there is no chronic long-term degenerative disease that will not begin to reverse itself. And that means use supplements, use foods that support the health of cells, all cells. And when it comes to the brain, good fats, omega-3 fatty acids, particularly omega-3 fatty acids are brain food, eggs, fish, seafood. Seafood has, has uh, always been referred to as brain food, largely because of its, <clears throat> excuse me, omega-3 fatty acid content, also zinc. Seafood is rich in zinc and iodine, both of which are also important for brain health. Vitamin E is very important for brain health. When I say omega-3s and iodine and zinc and vitamin E, I'm talking for folks dealing with Alzheimer's. I'm talking about folks dealing with epilepsy or seizure disorders. I'm talking about folks dealing with any kind of cognitive disorders. I'm talking about folks who just want to be, have a healthy brain. Also for kids whose brains are developing. Also for moms who are, uh, who are uh, growing a developing fetus. All of these supplements are critical for brain health, for adults, for kids, and for fetuses. Feti, that's how you say it. Also quality protein. Don't forget good quality protein. And of course, making sure you're moving your body. Cir moving the circulatory system to help deliver those nutrients. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. You're listening to The Bright Side. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we are back. 
back on the bright side. Thanks for joining us. We're on the air Monday through Friday, 8 to 9 Pacific time and 10 to 11 Central, 24-7 on our archive pages at brightsideben.com. Also, benfuchsarchives.com. We have search engines up. If you miss a program and like to review a program or if you have a client or patient or friend or loved one and you want to direct them to a specific subject, head to brightsideben.com or uh, benfuchsarchives.com and you can sign up or you can check out our search engine. You can also sign up to join the Brightside Ben team off of brightsideben.com and pharmacistben.com and criticalhealthnews.com. If you're an entrepreneur or you like the entrepreneur lifestyle, which I absolutely love, I've been an entrepreneur now for uh, 25 years and uh, having my own business and I can tell you there is Nothing more satisfying than growing a business. It's one of the most satisfying things you could ever do in life is growing a business from, from, a, from a, a nascent little baby into a nice thriving business. And Longevity will help you do it. You've got me. You've got Dr. Wallach. You've got all kinds of distributors that are willing to help you out if you want to sign up and join the Brightside Ben team. Of course, you've got to do a lot of the work yourself, but if you're nutritionally minded, if, you're, if you like the idea of health, if you like the idea of helping people at the level of health, if nutritional supplementation has helped you or your loved ones and you want to now help spread the word, please join the Brightside Ben team. Consider joining the Brightside Ben team for a one-time $25 fee. You can start a business. Call 866-735-2470. That's 866-735-2470 or head to brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com or criticalhealthnews.com and you can sign up right off our websites. Also have blog posts and videos and news stories as well at brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com and pharmacistben.com. So if you or a loved one is dealing with dementia issues, Alzheimer's, any kind of brain health issues, my dad has Alzheimer's disease or has dementia. Alzheimer's, by the way, is early onset dementia. It usually occurs uh, in folks who are in their 40s or 50s or 60s uh, when it shouldn't be occurring. If, when you get really old, like in your 80s or 90s, and you start to forget things, and it's not necessarily de uh, Alzheimer's dementia. Nonetheless, it doesn't really matter what you call it. It involves brain cells that are somehow toxic or not being fed correctly or not being oxygenated correctly. And this is really the bottom line to health, folks, when the bottom line to, to uh, dealing with all long-term chronic health issues. We have made health into a commodity, and it doesn't serve us. This idea of making health into something that's bought and sold doesn't serve us. This idea of making health into something that you pay for, that we have a health care system, and we have um, uh, ACA, affordable uh, the Affordable Health Care Act or Obamacare, whatever you want to call it, it doesn't work because it's not really health care. It's disease management. Nobody gets healthy with health care. And I, by the way, believe that we need to have some kind of catastrophic insurance, catastrophic health insurance. I, I have no problem with that because, you know, entropy happens. Crap happens. Things break down. Things break. And, and that's important. It's important to have catastrophic health care. But the idea that we're going to get better health because we have some kind of health care system, because the government, which is basically the poodle, the lapdog of the drug companies and the insurance companies and the hospital companies, those are who really run health care. And do you think they're interested in your health? No, they're interested in their bottom line, as they should be, because they're corporations. They have a fiduciary obligation. Corporations have a fiduciary obligation, not to their customers, not to their patients, to their shareholders. You don't want a healthcare system run by operations, run by uh, corporations that aren't in your, in your corner, that don't have your back. And corporations cannot have your back because they have a fiduciary obligation to their shareholders, not to their patients. So we think go to the doctor at Kaiser or whatever, Cigna or Anthem or wherever we're going, and we think we're getting healthcare that's focused on us. No, it's focused on bottom line which is why we have to take care of our health ourselves. The good news is it's not that hard to do. In fact, it's pretty darn easy to do. Eat correctly and eat less. Make sure you're supplementing. Make sure you're breathing correctly and moving your body. And as much as possible, separating yourself from the toxicity that passes as foods for the most part, although drugs and cigarettes and alcohol also play a role. Now, I'm not marginalizing or dismissing the mental and emotional and spiritual components. They're all very important when it comes to being healthy. But from a physical perspective, feed the body, breathe the body, and keep it clean. And it's as simple as that. 
Now, when it comes to uh, brain health issues, more and more we're recognizing that in addition to nutritional deficiencies, in addition to clogged up dirty blood, and a clogged up lymphatic system, toxicity plays a major role when it comes to brain health. Now, of course, toxicity plays a major role when it comes to all health issues, but we're especially manipulated at the level of our brain by food additives. And this is a big, big problem. The most important food additive when it comes to, when it comes to uh, toxicity in the brain is sugar. And make no mistake about it, the stuff is toxic. It's tricky a little bit because you do need to have sugar, glucose that is. You do need to have a little bit of glucose because your brain runs on it. But it, your brain doesn't have to run on it, it runs on fats too. That's why the ketogenic, the ketogenic diet is so important. But you do need to have a small amount of sugar. After that, it becomes a toxin. After a small amount of sugar, it becomes a toxin. And make no mistake about it, it is not benign. Glucose is not benign, when, especially when our foods are spiked with it. And of course, sugar is not the only uh, uh, food. Uh, this is not the only thing that spikes our food. There's also excitotoxins, and more and more. Scientists are beginning to recognize there's a connection between degenerative brain diseases like Parkinson's disease and Alzheimer's disease and dementias and and Huntington's disease and obsessive compulsive disorders and bipolar disorders and excitotoxins, excitotoxicity. Excitotoxins are chemicals that are added into foods to make our brain happy, to make our brain excited, so we keep eating them. Our brain goes yippee. I call them our yippee chemicals because our brain goes yippee. Excitotoxins. It doesn't say that, but it makes the food taste great. You could put MSG on anything, and it's going to taste good. You can get MSG at the supermarket under, Ax under the uh, brand name Accent Flavor Enhancer. Try it. Put, it. put Accent Flavor Enhancer on some food that you ordinarily wouldn't eat and watch what happens. Reading from the October 2004 edition of the journal Neurochemistry International, quote, a growing body of evidence suggests that perturbations in systems using the excitatory amino acid glutamate may underlie the pathogenic mechanisms of epilepsy, chronic neurodegenerative disorders like Huntington's disease and Alzheimer's dementia, unquote. The brain loves glutamate. It makes the brain and the owners of the brain, that is us, compulsively seek it, compulsively seek glutamate, and it turns out that many of our addictive behaviors, not just eating behavior, it turns out that many of our addictive behaviors are associated with glutamate and the drive for this excitation. And we talked about dopamine last week. We said dopamine is, is associated with addictive behaviors, and that's absolutely true. Dopamine plays an important role in a reward-seeking all reward-seeking behavior is associated with dopamine, but dopamine is about pleasure. Glutamate is about satisfying a drive. Glutamate, or I said dopamine, plays a role in, this, uh, in our brain's desire for pleasure, but glutamate may be even, more, even be, uh, more important than dopamine. If you ever notice that something you're addicted to, whether it's smoking or alcohol or pain pills or sex or work or caffeine or anything else, if you ever notice that it loses its ability to stimulate pleasure but you still need to use it, what you've experienced is a switch over from dopamine into glutamine. Satisfaction, uh, satisfying a drive is about glutamine. Getting pleasure is about dopamine. All right, got more to say here about this very interesting subject, glutamine, glutamate and dopamine. This is Dan Pillard. Do you have We are back on the bright side, and we do have lines open at 844-236-6010. We'll get your calls here in just a moment. I want to encourage you to check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. If you're dealing with hyperpigmentation, dark spots, accelerated aging, wrinkles, fine lines, acne blemishes, I love the idea that you can use retinol for both acne and uh, and uh, accelerated aging or uh, some of the signs of aging. If you're dealing with either blemishes, acne blemishes, or if you just want nice, smooth, soft skin, if your skin is not looking as healthy as it might, you might want to consider conditioning it with vitamin A in its retinol form. And you can find vitamin A in its retinol form in generous quantities, 5% retinol. You're not going to see that anywhere. You're not going to find that at the department store, that's for sure. Most cosmetic companies are and skin health companies are really intimidated by retinol because it's somewhat aggressive. And that's I'm saying that in a good way. It does something. It works. Along with vitamin C, retinol is one of the two most important. It is. Re vitamin C and retinol are the definitively, 
the two most important topical ingredients you could ever use if you are using anti-aging skincare and it's got some fancy herbal herbal formula in it or it's got uh, some kind of the latest peptide or the latest active ingredient that's supposedly supposed to help you with your wrinkles, but it doesn't have vitamin A in it and vitamin C in it, you're missing the boat, period. Vitamin A and vitamin C are the only two ingredients that have been shown definitively, repeatedly, study after study after study, have been shown definitively to help reduce the formation of wrinkles and fine lines as well as improve the condition and color and tone and health of the organ called the skin. And at the end of the day, folks, it's about the health of the skin, not the beauty and not the appearance. It's about the health of the organ called the skin. Once we address the health, the beauty and the appearance will follow. You can find out all our truth uh, about all our truth treatment products at truthtreatments.com, truthtreatments.com. Okay, 844-236-6010 is our number from the New England Journal of Medicine. Selenium for recurrent hyper, hyperthyroidism. 41 patients with Graves' disease who had been receiving antithyroid medication, something called methemazole, which basically kills the thyroid. Remember, this is doctor strategy. Doctor strategy 101. In order to calm the body down, you kill cells. If you have hyperthyroidism, which is a hyperactivity, hyperactivity of the thyroid, cause heart palpitations and anxiety and insomnia, sweating, all kinds of really miserable symptoms. Well, we'll just radiate the thyroid or we'll chemically radiate the thyroid with methimazole, doctor strategy. So 41 patients with recurrence Graves' disease who had been receiving antithyroid medication were randomly assigned to receive selenium or no selenium. And after two months, as it turns out, the patients on selenium had uh, significantly in their words, significantly greater results than folks who use placebo or who used uh, the antithyroid medication methimazole. Selenium's got all kinds of benefits for the thyroid. Selenium's got all kinds of benefits, period. It's one of Dr. Wallach's favorite supplements. When you're in the nutrition business, you always develop favorites. They're like your children. Zinc is my favorite, probably. Doc's favorite is selenium. If I could, if I could put words in his mouth, it's one of his favorites anyway. He's been talking about selenium for the heart. And uh, for many years, selenium's got all kinds of benefits for the body. It's a key player when it comes to detoxification, too. We talk about the molecule. We've talked about glutathione in the past. Well, selenium is very important for glutathione. Selenium is very important for the thyroid. Selenium is very important for cardiovascular health. Just an awesome, awesome nutrient. According to this article in the New England Journal of Medicine, selenium not only helps folks uh, with the thyroid, but it also improved quality of life, reduced ocular involvement. Folks who have hyperthyroidism will have eye problems. And it also slowed the disease progression in, uh, in folks who had, uh, who had something called Graves' orbitopathy, which is a, Graves, which is a uh, eye disease associated with Graves. One about 600, anywhere from 400 to 600 micrograms of selenium a day. You can find selenium in our ultimate niacin, which you can find out all about it. Uh, brightsideben.com, criticalhealthnews.com, or pharmacistben.com. Also from the New England Journal of Medicine, Common Acne Medication offers new treatment for multiple sclerosis. A Canadian clinical trial showed that a drug called minocycline, which is an acne medication, it's an antibiotic similar to tetracycline. Probably heard, some of you may have heard of that. They don't use tetracycline as much anymore. Uh, 20 years ago, 25 years ago, when I started in my pharmacy career, tetracycline was the go-to medicine for acne, and patients would be left on tetracycline for months or years even. Tetracycline and minocycline, for that matter, and also doxycycline, which is sometimes used for acne. Those are the, the main acne medications. They call them the cyclins, t- uh, tetracycline, minocycline, and, and doxycycline. There's actually commercials now for doxycycline for acne. These drugs are very problematic. All antibiotics are problematic, but these drugs are especially problematic. All, all antibiotics are going to mess up the digestive system. And anybody who's taken an antibiotic for uh, one course or even, you know, any, any, uh, even just a few days will notice that they're having digestive problems, bloating, gas, diarrhea, just discomfort at the level of the digestive system. Of course, that's because these antibiotics kill the good bacteria. They kill all bacteria. But minocycline and doxycycline and tetracycline also have a, an added problem, another problem, and that is they lock up minerals. So they'll deprive you of things like calcium and magnesium and potassium, and they'll even tell you, uh, doctors will even tell you that you that don't want to take supplements with your minocycline, mineral supplements with your minocycline or doxycycline. 
according to this article, now they want to give uh, antibiotics for MS. If you might, you might ask, why would an antibiotic help folks who have multiple sclerosis? Well, it turns out that antibiotics, in addition to being antibiotic, in addition to killing bacteria, they also have some anti-inflammatory properties as well. Nonetheless, the real solution, if you're dealing with any kind of inflammatory health issue or autoimmune disease like multiple sclerosis, is to figure out why is the body inflaming, not to suppress inflammation. This is a very important point when it comes to health. We're obsessed in the world of medicine and in the world of pharmacy with anti-inflaming, with anti-inflammation, which are probably the, the most important class of all the drugs or the anti-inflammatory drugs. Real question to ask if you have an inflammatory health issue is, why are we inflaming? Inflammation is about defense. Inflammation, as I've said many times, is the calling card of the defense system, the immune system. It's how the immune system shows up. If you're inflamed anywhere, you have a defensive response and the logical, not the doctor solution, but the logical solution, the logical strategy is to figure out why the body feels like it needs to be in a defensive posture and that always means an offending agent by definition. The offending, the offending agent more often than not will come in through the digestive system and in the case of multiple sclerosis, all you gotta do is talk to Dr. Terry Walls and read the book The Walls Protocol and you'll see that multiple sclerosis is reversible. And multiple sclerosis is a poster child for all autoimmune diseases. If Dr. Terry Walls and many others could reverse their multiple sclerosis symptoms never to come again by, di by using dietary strategies and nutritional strategies, you can too. And it's not just MS, it's lupus, and it's uh, type 1 diabetes, and it's hyper, uh, autoimmune disease of the thyroid, and it's any autoimmune disease. And logic tells you this, biochemical logic, biochemistry logic, biological logic tells you this. If you have an inflammatory issue, you have an offending agent. If you have an offending agent, that means it's probably getting into your body through foods, unless you're an IV drug user, or perhaps if you're smoking. But for the most part, it's coming in through foods. Okay, one more here. Nature medicine. The gut microbiome plays a key role in treatment with classic diabetes medication. Clear picture on how metformin works. It turns out that metformin works, achieves its blood control, uh, blood control properties through modulation of the gut microbiome. Yet another study implicating the gut microbiome in blood sugar issues. As I've said many times, this is the link between the first point on our triangle of disease and our second point. The first two points are the, blood sugar, uh, the digestive system and the blood sugar system, and the microbiome is the link. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. We're coming back with your phone calls on the bright side right after this. 844-236-6010 is our number, and we do have lines open. Back on the bright side, I'm Pharmacist Ben, 844-236-6010 is our number. Time to hit the phones. Coach Cosmo, good morning. How you doing, Coach Cosmo? My buddy. Brother Ben, how are What's you? What's going on, Coach? Long time no talk to you. Hey, give out your website before I forget. All right. Well, going through a bit of an online shift, but folks, if you want to get in touch with me, I am completely down with Ben's process and philosophy. I am all about helping folks heal at the cellular level. You can reach me at 908-912-HELP. That's 908-912-4357. And I'm also on YouTube at Coach Cosmo through YouTube, so you can find me there as well. Nice. You do great work, Coach Cosmo. Thank you so much for everybody, well, for all, me and for everybody. Uh, I am so indebted to you and Dr. Wallach for putting me onto this, and I am really happy to be able to get to you today because I'm going to meet with a good friend who is actually on um, a couple of medications that I wanted to get your insight on. He okay. has a, his thought is his focus is about weight loss, but I'm trying to help him understand how medications on a long-term basis are not helping him. And I wanted okay. to run by you the couple of medications that he's on and okay. get your insight if that works. Sure. So pardon me if I mispronounce these things, you know these names can be kind of tricky. Right. Amlodipine Benazepril. So, first of all, let me ask you about this guy. How old is this guy? Um, 55. Okay, he's got heart problems, I take it. Well, I, he's definitely, he used to be about 300 pounds. He's okay. about 50 pounds. He's 270 now. He wants to get down even from that. Um, as far okay. as his fuller profile, like, I don't have all the details. but I Well, the amylodipine, amid. Amid, am, amylodipine, <laughs> I have a hard time saying it too, uh, Norvasc, that's the brand name. Uh, it, that's an antihypertensive, and they also use it for angina, so I'm assuming he's got some heart issues. But go ahead, What's, okay. what are the other ones? 
and the other one is hydrochlorothiazide. Okay, that's another blood pressure one. That's a diuretic. That's like a that's the that's a first tier drug for. Uh, dealing with hypertension. High blood pressure is, is pretty tricky for folks, to, for uh, the medical model to deal with. So they treat it in, in tiers, or pharmacologically treat it in tiers, in, in levels. When I say tiers, I mean levels. So the first level treatment is a diuretic. That would be the first drug you get because doctors feel like diuretics are the, the most gentle of the, of the antihypertensive drugs. Typically, antihypertensive drugs are not gentle. They're pretty strong because to control the blood pressure, you've got to do some heavy-duty biochemistry. So the first drug they'll give you is a diuretic. That is a, a, a drug that helps you lose water. So you say, why would I take a diuretic to lower my blood pressure? Well, doctor philosophy is if you reduce the water, the, the volume of the blood, the pressure will drop. Just think of a garden hose. That's the best metaphor for hypertension, by the way, is a garden hose. High, high blood pressure is like a lot of water pushing the outside part of the hose. Does that make sense? So you got, if you've got a lot of water pressure, the, the outside part of the hose will have a lot of stress on it, and ultimately it can cause problems if you put too much stress on the, on the hose. So the doctors feel by reducing the water, the water content of the blood, by making you urinate more, you'll drop your pressure. Probably will. The problem is you'll lose all your B vitamins, and you'll lose your electrolytes as well, which is the big issue when you're on HCTZ, as we call it. That's the easy way of saying hydrochlorothiazide, HCTZ. And you end up losing your B vitamins, you lose your vitamin C, and you lose your electrolytes. And this is a big, this is a hidden problem, you know, especially for folks drinking lots of water. We never talk about this. If, if you listen to this program, I talk about it a lot because I suspect that the loss of B vitamins and the loss of vitamin C and the loss of electrolytes is behind a lot of our health challenges, especially cardiovascular heart health challenges and diabetes, both of which are very dependent. The heart and the blood sugar system are dependent on these nutrients that you lose through your fluids. So diuretics are not benign as no drug is benign, yet it is the, they're the most benign if you want to, you know, they're less, they're, they're the gentlest, <laughs> right, if that means anything. The least of the evils, right? The yeah. least of the evils, exactly. The second drug, I cannot say that about this, the Norvask, uh, the amlodipine, because that one is not benign. That is a nasty, nasty drug. Now you're starting to get into the second level of antihypertension, and that is, uh, that is uh, drugs that actually work with the heart, that slow the heart down. This is the second strategy that doctors use to lower your blood pressure. They'll shut down the heart suppress the heart. And only a medical professional can think that that's a good idea. This is what allows them to electrocute your heart. And they will literally do that. That's called an ablation if you have a heart problem. See, okay. this is the distinction between clinical chemistry and biochemistry. Another distinction that we don't really make very often, but we should be. Clinical chemistry is the chemistry of numbers. It's the chemistry of statistics. It's the chemistry of diagnostics and tests. Doctors are clinicians. They work with clinical chemistry. They don't work with biochemistry chemistry, and for the most part, they don't even understand biochemistry, except what the salesman tells them, perhaps, or what they remember from, from their two semesters of biochem that they got in medical school. For the most part, they're working with their test scores, because they're clinicians, and they work with clinical chemistry. So they say, well, if the amlodipine drops the blood pressure, then what's wrong with it? Well, what's wrong with it is you are knocking out the most important, arguably the most important organ in the body, which is the heart. So then you say, well, what do I do if I have high blood pressure? Well, it's the same thing you do as if you have any health challenge. You nutriate, you oxygenate, and you detoxify. You clean the body out. That is nutriate with uh, nutri uh, nu nutrients that help support blood health. Again, it's going to be your electrolytes, your B vitamins, and vitamin C. Magnesium is particularly important for lowering blood pressure. Everybody with hypertensive, anti, or who has high blood pressure or any heart problem should be using magnesium. 2,000 milligrams a day is a good place to be. At least 1,000 milligrams a day of magnesium. The B complex all day long. Sip on your BTT all day long. Use B complex rich foods, vegetables, uh, um, especially uh, foods that are not processed, meats, fish. Eggs, dairy are all good sources of the B vitamins. The more you cook your food, the more you'll lose your B vitamins. Niacin is a particularly important B vitamin for, for blood pressure. Niacin is almost like a medicine. And again, like with magnesium, everybody who's got high blood pressure should be using niacin. I like the time to release niacin. You can also use our ultimate niacin, uh, which you can find from Longevity uh, at brightsideben.com, pharmacistben.com, and criticalhealthnews.com. Keep your sugar intake to a minimum as best as possible. Make sure you're relaxing the body. 
This is very important. If you don't believe me, get yourself a high, if you have high blood pressure and you think I'm crazy, get yourself a blood pressure cuff. If you don't have one, everybody with hypertension should have, and we should all have one anyway, just to check. So take your blood pressure, then go sit in a hot bath and take your blood pressure again and watch what happens. I'm guaranteeing you, your blood pressure will drop faster than an antihypertensive. Just a bath. When was the last time any doctor wrote a prescription for taking a hot bath? When was the last time an insurance company paid for a hot tub in your backyard, right? Even a hot shower will work. Deep breathing will work. Muscle relaxation will work. Visualization strategies will work. These are all non-toxic ways to lower your blood pressure. Of course, when you lower your blood pressure, you will reduce the load on the heart, uh, and that will also provide benefits for folks dealing with heart disease or angina or anything else, any other uh, heart health challenges. Relax the body. Uh, make sure you're using good nutritional supplements. Make sure you're uh, staying away from toxic foods, especially sugar, and also, for that matter, as we're talking cytotoxins, you want to be careful about those as well. So uh, there's lots of strategies there. And you know what? He doesn't want to stop taking his drug right away. But he's, if it was me, I would certainly be weaning myself off as soon as possible. Does that help yeah. you, Coach Cosmo? That helps phenomenally, my friend. Thank you so right, much. Buddy. God bless you, Coach. Talk to my you soon, time, man. man. Have, a, have a great day. All right. I got a call here. I'm not sure this is for me, but we'll take Kristen in Tennessee anyway. What's up, Kristen? How you doing? Good morning. Hi. How are you? Um, uh, Alex is not working today, I assume. <laughs> no, you, Alex is on next, but you got me okay. here, and you got about a minute. Okay, you want to? Well, we'll anyway, let you. We'll give you something to, to say. Because my first um, call in last week got seventy three thousand views, which I guess they're interested in the the Obama crash, which is now a hundred percent inevitable. What's what is the you're talking about? The economic crash? An economic crash? Yeah. The, the economic crash that's coming. Well, you got about. Yeah, I'm going I'm to give you about the, another 30 seconds or so because that's all we have. But uh, tell, I'm, I'm kind of curious. What are you talking about here? Um, the Obama crash, which is inevitable because it was uh, manipulated from 2015, will be happening at the end of the year. It um, it cannot be um, undone. It's it's inevitable. So you're talking about an happening. economic recession or a depression kind of thing. It's um. It's an it's a crash. It crash the economy crashes every seven years. It was supposed to crash in it crashed in two thousand and eight. It, it it was supposed to crash in two thousand and fifteen, um, and it 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 was manipulated by Obama. So it's going to happen big time. You know, towards the end of the year when the uh, Fed raises the interest rates twice. And I was going to call in for Alex because a lot of people for, have asked me yeah, questions. I, 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 Alex is Alex is going to be on next, and you can talk to Alex about that because I'm not. You know, that, that we don't really do politics here or or, or economics for that. That matter. This is more of a health okay, show, but, economics, but yeah. I appreciate I appreciate your point of view. Thanks for your call, Kristen. I don't really like talking about politics too much, although I do have do have my own political views. But you know what? It doesn't matter about politics if you're sick. Nobody cares about Obamacare or, or nobody cares about Obama or crashes if they have colon cancer. If you're sick, you got one one goal, and that is to get better. And at the end of the day, that's our fundamental, that's the most fundamental need is to be healthy. Our most fundamental need is to be vital and strong and healthy so we can do our lives and go about our business. And that was, that's what we're all about on the bright side, getting you better, getting you to access and leverage the power of the human body, uh, human body's inherent ability to heal, no matter what your health challenge is. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. Please check out our Truth Skin Health products at truthtreatments.com. Tomorrow we'll continue talking excitotoxins. I'm going to tell you about a, new, a wonderful supplement, one of my all-time favorite supplements that you can use for glutamate toxicity. We'll talk about that tomorrow on the Bright Side. Have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful, awesome, spectacular day. I'm Pharmacist Ben. We'll talk to y'all later. Bye for now.